In a recent video I did entitled Possibilities, I illustrated a few of the mistakes that people fall into, and the traps, mistakes, whatever you like to call them, when trying to make castings. One of the ones I highlighted was this little bit here, where we see a gentleman trying to stir metal. Now he's trying to make an alloy, he's trying to make a tin bronze, he's just added the tin and he does need to stir it in. But he's doing it all wrong. He's doing it very viciously and as I commented in the video, what was he really trying to do? Make whipped cream because he's beating air into the metal just like you do when you make whipped cream. Now first of all he was using something like this to do the stirring with. Uh, I think it was a bent bit of, a uh, little bit of a bend on the end, a bit of steel strip. Not a very useful tool for stirring with or for removing dross with. What you should be using to remove dross with, dross with is something like this. It's round so it sort of fits into the crucible and you could dip it in uh, in order to pick up the dross on the top. And I've, I've made a, a smaller one here for the purposes of this exercise because the, the size of this on the end should be, you know, I don't know, a quarter to a half, maybe a bit more of the size of the crucible you're working with. Now, in order to demonstrate this, I've got a few jars that I've just filled with water. Now, I would have liked to have used crucibles and actual metal, but the problem with that, of course, is you can't really see what's happening. So these jars and the water will simply have to do. And what I'm going to do is add a little bit of a black food dye. Uh, first to the one over here. There's a fair bit of dye. And let's stir it the way the gentleman did and see what happens. Not too bad. And he didn't really need to stir as viciously as he did. Now, let's try it the way I think it should be done. First of all, you go in with one of these and you very carefully pull any dross and stuff on the top to one side. If you really want to, you can pick the dross up and flick it away. But the main thing is you pull it to one side. Let's put our dye in. Now we gently push this to the bottom and we come down to the bottom and across and up, up, across and down, across, up and down and it's done job is done now you never break the surface when you're doing that except when you first go in and when you come out and there's absolutely no air beaten into the metal the only times you should really be stirring metal is when you're making up an alloy and i advise most people not to do that uh, or when you're working with an alloy that's known to segregate now uh, lead in copper segregates and you need to stir that because the lead sinks to the bottom and some of the zinc alloys uh, like um, ESDA 27 and I think also ESDA 12 and, and 8 do tend to segregate with the aluminium coming to the top and you need to stir it to get it to right but remember when you do stir metal not like this but gently, like this. Across, up, across, down, across, up, across, down. And it'll only take you a couple of shoves to do it, and that's it, job done. Let me see if I can demonstrate what we're actually trying to achieve here. Suppose this is our crucible. And here's our metal sitting in it. Now, rather than stirring around and around like this, what we're doing is pushing down here, across here, back up here, and across there. And we do all that as far as possible without breaking the surface. The result is that the metal actually rolls like this. And you can, you can see that in the top, actually, on certainly on large crucibles. And I once uh, had to add some magnesium to a 600 kilo crucible of um, uh, 356 to convert it to 357. And I could see as I did this that the metal rose here like this and down a bit there. But because I was doing it quite gently, the oxide skin on the top here 
never broke and I could see the metal actually rolling like this underneath that skin and that of course gets a complete agitation within the metal without getting any oxide in and gets it very very even with regard to composition that's what we're after we do not want to beat around and around and around like this which if we do well we might be able to show it up here if you go around and around and around like this what will happen is that your metal will do this you will get a whirlpool here and whirlpools push air in it may well mix the metal up reasonably well but you're going to get a lot of air in when doing it all right let's try that again with a different color a different dye and maybe not quite so much but we'll see what happens couple of drips and we'll stir the bad way pretty quick the dye seems to disperse quite well and again the correct way gently in cross to the bottom up over down cross up over down across up and you can see by the time I've done a couple of movements of that it's it's done the job is well done and and even even doing this it disperses quite quickly so that you don't if you insist on doing it that wrong way you don't need to do it like this I mean you can see the air being pulled in there that's extremely bad always just use the gentle up and down always when handling your metal be as gentle as you can don't break the surface and don't mix air into it